but there have been improvements from some of the individuals on phase since the departure of Nico. He left a lot of room for others to fill, and they've done so. But I think this game could just be absolutely fireworks from the get-go. So buckle in, everybody. The first map of phase and made in Brazil beginning here on Nuke. And we've got kills on the outer yard. We've got Brokey trying to prevent them from going for this cross. He gets gushed, as does Olaf. And it looks like the Brazilians are kicking it off with a pistol. But their king in Coldzera goes down. <laughs> the peasants rise up. We're already very, very excited. I like this. I heard it was... Um... The producer said it was a party uh, for, in, in the phase team speak. They're having a great time. Uh, so the mood is very high for them. We'll see uh, if, if MIBR can put a damper on it. We know they kind of ride the highs and lows too. Uh, but they try to latch on to the moments as much as possible. The way it was expla explained to me, okay, as a foreigner to Portuguese culture, Brazilian culture, is that just try to enjoy the moment as much as possible. Like, that's why we see that emotions are embraced and not set aside. And it works really well for MIBR. And even when things are going badly, though, and it's negative emotions, they're always trying. Like, even when they're, like, 14-1 down, what we saw in the showdown where they're struggling so hard, they cared so much about the fact that they were losing each round. Yep. Okay, things go already a little bit south. Rain picks one off, crossing into lower. Leo is going to take pole position inside of control room. And Lucas could get caught off guards. And Deagle spam in. Rain, two kills on this round already. Yeah, I was getting a little too excited there, Lucas. Emptying the MAC-10 cost him his life, and it could cost MIBR this round. Not his death in it of itself, but just the constant racking up of frags here for FaZe Clan. Ooh, and a dink versus KNG. TRK, we know this guy can deliver. And maybe this... right now is the time to do it, because uh, the momentum of this T-side start is in question. Now the Brazilians start to get it back, and it crashes down around phase. But there's one man left again. It's Cold Zera. He clears the back of the bomb site. He knows where KNG is at, and he gets them both. Phase gonna go ahead and rob it away. Round two is theirs for the taking. You could call him the new Brazilian hot dog, maybe. Cold Zera, kill me. <laughs> this guy, he's so clutch. Yeah, he shows him who's boss. The real king of the. Of Brazil right here. Cold Zera into the one on two. Nicely done for face kind of bring this back. And I thought I was like, this is the position that TRK is best in. He's an anchor player. He's so good at, at, at spots like that where he has no much angle to work with, but he can really lock down more than one kill very easily. And uh, they put up the numbers. They come back from the five on two situation, only to lose the one on two, funnily enough. Well, FaZe, a nice round for them. A bunch of Deagle body shot spam kills early on in the round. And MIBR, well, they don't care that that just happened. They're going to try to cross outside in similar fashion again. Just a bunch of glizzies running across outside. Oof. PSM's taken out of this one. Kier B. Gotta be cautious. He just lost a teammate, and he goes down as well. Oh, dude, this is gonna be a back-and-forth affair. Uh, already a sketchy round. Let's see this hasty rotation from Rain clearing outside, making so much progress into the big garage already. I love his call to action. So I did a, a Rain demo on my a YouTube channel recently, and I noticed, like, the number one thing about him was he just knew how to refrag better than anybody else. He was so good at kind of being there when you needed him the most. And on the roster, uh, Rain was cited as a player who's helping out a lot right now when it comes to the calling and preparing. Kills towards the ramp, perhaps. Olaf goes for the peak, doesn't see him, takes to the top of it, and dies out to TRK. Interesting. This B site now very much compromised. Deep smoke on Decon Door. Cold swings it open, and Rain, he could go for the double side. Yep. But maybe waiting for the plant attempt, because for now, he still has the element of surprise. And there it is. Catches one of the open, predicts the additional peak. Leo getting the better of him, but 10 seconds left. Cold, he peeks out, sections off the 1v1s. He knows he's being gunned down here, but no Cold way. with another 1v2. He can't be stopped. He does it again. I can't believe that. I can't believe he pulls it off again. That is absolutely insane. Oh, the monster. That's so sick. Yeah. 
in the lower site. I mean, there's not, no analysis needed. It just basically outguns them. Beautiful movement around the bomb site. Easy spray down. And MIBR are on to pistols. This would have been a round to pull it back, destroy the economy of the CTs. Cost way more for the CTs, of course, to ha put together rounds after getting their economy destroyed. Whereas MIBR, you know, they'll always be one away from a, a, a full on buy. This time, an easy mow down. So it looks like things are going to stabilize here for the FaZe Clan. But a very exciting bath, bath, back and forth start. Yeah, they are sweating out here. They're going to need a shower. After this game is done. Hey, what's that? Yeah. TRK goes fishing. Stood so still, he almost disappeared. Now the player's over top of many. One will die. Oh, you see his head nice. pop. Kirby gets the next kill. Three to one up for FaZe Clan. Super quickly and easily done. Looking very clean. Okay. Now the buy-in is going to come back here for MIBR. There's not going to be an op in play. TRK will take a small concession with the Galil. They'll pick that up. Full nades for basically everybody. And when we saw them play last at the showdown, or at the fall series, this is the showdown, they had a really cool T side on Nuke. I think the way that they were able to wrap outside was actually there's was so much focus to taking yard and getting to the back of heaven. And the way they found some of these duels with the help of Leo Drunky, I think was the highlight, honestly, for a lot of us watching MIBR as a new lineup. As a new lineup with unfortunately low expectations. You know, remember that, that not only were they impressing at that time, but off of the back of kind of a low set bar, which made it all the more enjoyable. So to know that they've just been constantly practicing in Europe ever since, I mean, three weeks between these events, you'd think they'd just get stronger, but that frag grenade definitely shakes them at the knees. Lucas, able to get the first headshot, Cold Zera. Dude, he's been a problem so far, but he does go down only to be traded out by Rain. And Brokey swings from the top rope, but the 3K from Rain, sustaining on 10 HP in the end, gives FaZe their fourth. Yeah. He is the caretaker of Squeaky. Knows exactly how to play this position to perfection. Trade out on Lucas. Amazing double spray, and Brokey comes in from the top ropes to get the last kill. Cold Zero gets an important kill and gets traded out again. He is playing lights out for sure. Phase to a quick four to one start. Uh, instant buyback into the Deagles. Lots of close situations here, even on that round. Doesn't come down to a clutch necessarily. This is really just about taking the, the wind out of the sails for MIBR. It's not an easy task though. They're so imbued with life right now. It feels like, you know, they, they can take their losses in stride because they themselves probably have measured expectations. Ooh, wow. Yes. This is a scary rain. This is a thunderstorm. <laughs> More of that. Quickly clamps down on the squeaky door. I really like that imagery, Launders. Imbued with life. I think that is spot on. And I'd say imbued with a new sense of life on FaZe Clan. You know, we talk about Nico leaving and, and kind of the struggles that that could have caused, but I've been impressed with Kirby lately. Rain has, you know, just been always the pillar of this roster, surviving every single roster change since this team, i.e. Kingwin, came into fruition. But FaZe, they're going to be on fire. Yes, they lost the pistol, and they haven't dropped a round ever since. Rain just locking down this smoke here by Squeaky, taking Lucas out at the legs. Even despite FaZe being on fire, it's MIBR looking to cool them off and op on KNG and guns right back in their hands here. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I feel like I would go as far as to say most of the players on the team have gotten better without Nico there. But because Nico was so good, filling that gap and actually winning games without him is, is obviously its own challenge. But crazy to see how much they've stepped up to that challenge. Taking some big series wins recently, but there's a lot of questions about, you know, how long will Olaf stay on the team? How confident are they in keeping him? How much does he want to continue to play? And will they find consistency past the honeymoon period? Answering some of those questions in, in even this game, just seeing how clutch they've been, how many good setups they have, how the refrags are. Rain's forums popping up so hard. 
which is such an awesome thing to see. I mean, I feel like Rain, just whether it's his demeanor or if it's just his style as a player, kind of... He's got a calmness. Yeah, and and, and maybe, I, I wouldn't say underrated because everybody knows how good he is. But like, we're talking eventually legendary status. Counter-Strike Hall of Famer, IMO. Cold Zera over towards Squeaky, just being a constant nuisance. Two kills for him. Man advantage on for Face Clan. VSM knocking on Heaven's door. They're getting picked apart in the game plan. Suddenly, this Heaven Wrap, which would have been a great feature of this split, becomes a desperation play because, of course, they're going to be waiting for it. There's enough CTs to watch every single angle. And interesting, uh, an adjustment here from IBR. They're actually going to turn it back to ramp. Olaf Meister fully aware of the situation with a nice clean angle. 2K spray down, leaving KNG alone. He'll have way too much to do, no time at all. Even with the bomb on his back, he'll have to give this round up. Nicely done from Olaf. And overall, everybody hitting him with a jab on their way over towards heaven to try to wrap up into the site. Uh oh. Oh my god. Kanji's getting rushed after time. Ooh, that one's gonna cost. Loses the op. Phase continue on fire. And he is left with literally zero dollars in the bank account. Mm. So the yeah, rest of his true. team will be ready for the buy, but he is as busted as it gets. Cold Zera. This squeaky door's been open round after round, and I feel like the success is definitely going from phase to the other side. I love that. Olaf's reposition here. I mean, I was just thinking to myself, how often do you see a team take heaven to use ladder onto ramp? To go back, yeah. Could have really combined nicely with KNG being on secret, but Olaf heads up, as he tends to be. Shuts down not just one, but both. So they never even find footing towards the ramp or the B site. And that sixth round added to the tally. FaZe Clan, excellent CT start. I do love how they're taking all these duels in the door, just not letting Vent Dive be even an option. I mean, that's something that you want as a feature of your T side, and they're just forward facing on it because they have such strong aimers. I think that's a, a position on this map they can play unlike most other teams. Rain and Cold, literally superstars when they're in top form, can stand there and outduel anyone. The double ramp setup is also going to pay off, most likely. Olaf can drag their attention a bit. Let's see if the kills come out. One for one, and oh, even better trades. But Brokey is also there. Two Ready kills. to come through with the kiss. Crispy op frags. It's only two frags, but it's still a two-on-two, -two and TRK is extremely low. This pushes a lot of pressure onto KNG, and he does have that bomb. CTs, though, in compromised spots. They have to forfeit heaven. They have to give up hell. KNG has the option to wrap around towards Mini if he wants an alternative entrance to the A site. Could go back onto ramp and both hit down on B. Currently, FaZe Clan split. I'm, I really like MYBR's communication in these rounds. I, you, you can, you, it, it's perceptible with the, that the way that they make calls. They do ambitious maneuvers to work together to try to squeeze onto sites. And I think Rain is in a pretty obvious position. Whether or not they can kill him is another thing. Yeah. Because this is a spot you play whether or not they know you're here. You just guard the vent. Ooh. Ooh, take him out on heaven. And man, he is just aim mapping right now. Like aim underscore mapping these guys. Even with the bomb falling down to the site, you can see TRK trying to chase the frag. As Rain will as well. He's going to clear this corner. Oh, oh, yeah, right. With the B hop. Had to get in there. <laughs> back to back rounds where FaZe Clan take away the money. MIBR no longer having much fun. Brokey, two kills on this. Good op rotation into the ramp after TRK looked to really alleviate a little bit of the pressure. I mean, that is crisp. You know, if Squeaky Door was blown off its hinges, as it has been in almost every other round, yeah. then that flash from TRK from ramp, I think, draws his attention. But with the door closed, he focuses on heaven. And with it, shuts down the round. We find MIBR back onto the pistols. This T side has yet to really deliver. Seven in a row from FaZe. But a saving grace. Oh. Lucas kills Rain and then hits Kierby for one point of damage. Brokey scoped in on the back side of the fence. That does open up the possibility of a mini hit. And now Cold Zera relegated to behind the vent, hoping that the Heaven player can lend a helping hand. But they're not going to check him. Easy pickup from Cold, dropping the bomb at his feet, calling his teammates into the action. They don't mind losing a bit of health, but, oh, good damage being landed. 
and he's just cowering to the corner. Now he wants to fight. Gets himself another kill. Lucas is dead to rights. It is Cold Zero with the 4K and Phase in eighth round. Whenever they need him, he's there for their beck and call. He's coming up huge on these holds, especially when they have a player disadvantage situation. It's always Cold Zero every time we look at the screen. Clark Kent on phase right here. It's nasty. You know he's got that rifle control. And again, they shut it down inside of Squeaky. Some good opening kills, especially by Lucas there with the body shot deagles into rain. That gun is so strong from that distance. And that's one of the <laughs> most success they've, successful rounds they've had versus rain trying to guard onto the Squeaky, ironically with deagles. And unfortunately, then locked down by Cold Zera. So a little bit of early success, and particularly versus Rain. See if they can do it in a gun round and follow through with it, because uh, this T side starting to fizzle out. But they've had close moments. We'll give them that, you know, taking over Hell, getting into those gritty 2v2s. See if they can take it on this one, the 10th round. Still without casualty on either side. And you can see them sizing one another up outdoors. The Ops gonna peek out from Garage and gets dismantled. Brokey. I'd like to get Brokey's view on that. See what he saw. Let's see what Rain can grab back here. He cheats outside of the smoke, hoping that they walk into him. Oh, there's actually two CTs doing the exact same thing, but one of which deeper on spawn. If they go into Garage, then Cold Zera could become a problem. But they're gonna go ahead and split through Mini, using Squeaky Door to take the A floor with a Molly up in heaven. This should absolutely be a plant and a man advantage in the post. But Olaf, grabbing a kill back from Hell, at least makes things equal. Mm, interesting spot now. Olaf up in the heavens. Don't know if anybody, oh, let's see, a little bit low on utility. Kirby's got an incendiary to work with. They could potentially flush out a spot. This is really just about the Heaven guy trying to get a kill. They're going to combine with actually three flashes to make sure everyone's blind back sight. Good coordination here. Olaf drops down into the site. VSM will kill the player inside of Mini. Could be a key frag. See if Lucas can make it on one-on-one. -on -one. He's looking for the spam through the hut. He's done significant damage here and could potentially end this. First kill comes out. The defuse will be locked in. There's more than enough time for Olaf and he'll win the round. One-on-one -on -one situation. Scary spot there with that damage from Lucas. Good Got sequence of trades. Coming yeah. out of the front side of sight. Kierby's key... Kierby's position was crucial. A key frag coming in from Mini that then let him take that fight front sight. VSM nearly dead. Olaf uses the moment to kind of keep him in and committed. Lucas takes down the player who is crawling in front. But uh, trades the name of the game there for FaZe Clan. So they survive with one player. One player makes the difference. And one round, all the MIBR still hang on to. I think they missed the squeaky nade here. Makes things a little bit awkward. Not sure if they want to get out. Oh, no, they got it. Oh, and nice. And takes one off of the heavens. They're going to follow that one up quickly. Brokey, he frag. Can he get two? He does. Drops down and gets wrecked by Lucas. So, man advantage up for MIBR. Again, they've found footing on the A site. But it's not a question of getting onto A. It's a question of holding onto it. Olaf now all alone. So this should be it. The Brazilians looking to double their round count deep in this first half. Don't hold your breath. Olaf, give it a shot, man. Come so close. Okay, never mind. He's too humble in his old age. Yeah. He just want to do it to them. He chooses to walk away. Let them have this moment. They've got careers ahead of them. He doesn't want to break their souls. So many majors he's already got under his belt. He doesn't, he doesn't want to have to do this. Give them one round. He's too nice, man. Falls back, keeps the AK. Obviously money a little bit low here for FaZe, so definitely going to be worth its weight in gold. MIBR, can they recover? Can they recuperate a half off of the back of this second round? It's a great question. And we, again, we got to contextualize losses at all times. We look back in the first few rounds. There's two 1v2s, one by Coldzera. Uh, even a round ago, Olaf Meister wins a one-on-one -on -one situation. 2v1 at the moment, but one-on-one -on -one ultimately. And with all those clutches, plus the rounds that could have followed where the economy would have been broken a phase, MIBR would already have a very decent half. So I'd say you, you want to give them a chance here. MIBR could potentially recover this half. It would definitely start with this round. After this, I mean, pretty much their odds are slim to none. 
of pulling anything back, but they've, they've got a full chance here with the off on KNG full utility for the most part. Lucas feeling a bit of pressure. He is that only player in the lobby. Yeah. Would be very much susceptible to the ramp flank, which is currently a question. We've got FaZe Clan, two players deep on the position. Also two here on Squeaky Door. So if they try to go for this A split without much control of outer, it could have been a problem, but obviously four guys out for MIBR. And they're gonna start crossing over towards heaven. A little bit of chip damage exchanged through smoke to the favor of FaZe and a frag that goes deep to the Good. face of Lucas. Down to 45. Now that really primes the players in lobby to deal with him. And Brokey's gonna stay high alert in hell. Lucas knows that they're gonna be trying to squeeze because they took Haven control. So it's just about him trying to win this fight. But he's really exposed inside of Squeaky. This is awkward. And he'll die as well. So that's a free opening kill. This might be a route up heaven. Cold. But without HUD control. Okay, TRK will take hold out. Yep. Rain answers back. They're maintaining numbers here. Brokey though, he's in oh my God. skies and well. TRK disguised as a CT down here on this bomb site. 25 seconds to spare. A couple of fake plants, and he decides to reposition, going for the front side of site, but he loses his teammate in the meantime. So TRK, with as many enemies as letters in his name, needs to come big with the clutch, and the first one falls for free. He knows there's a player in heaven, but Brokey doesn't miss those. And that's FaZe with a 10th round on the board. Tight angle on the right side side. Just don't let him escape. Because you've got someone coming from Squeaky to cover the other route out of the situation. So that's a quick 10th. They look good holding on to the site. Honestly, the amount of control that MIBR had, they were probably feeling, feeling pretty good. But then these really good uh, frags in the middle of all that chaos is, is what just seals the deal. And I feel like Lucas's position is what's most critical here because, again, it's no secret if a team is going to take heaven on CT side, teams are going to push into into hut and try to take over lobby control because it's a safe place to fight from it opens up the position in front of hut it lets you know there's no upper exec with the split that way so lucas getting a kill or not getting a kill could have made a world of difference starting to go heavier numbers inside of lobby early vsm still a consistency outside just trying to keep that op on rotation. He was in hell, thinking maybe he'd find something outdoors. Now in the depths of ramp, opens up Olaf for a potential rotate. We'll see what happens. Plenty of time on the clock, and it's just going to be the KNG versus Brokey show. Young Gun gets the pickup, and he's actually got an additional player sectioned off in trophy. Leo going to be too easy to get out of here. Olaf's going to take position of the front line and catches him by surprise. VSM, the only success story for MIBR in this 13th round thus far. But a walkout from Squeaky looking likely from VSM. He gets a second headshot. That ejects him through the vents into the lower site, but already CT's in position, getting all the closer. He jumps with Bomb, and FaZe continue on with yet another round win. Yeah, they lock it up. They're looking super good. They're just mauling them at every single turn right now. Again, they're just keeping up on all the frags. There's nothing special that MIBR are doing to get away with things. They definitely got away with a lot, of course, their first go of it at the Fall Series because they were such an unknown quantity, but now the aggression from Leo that people know about and the way that VSM plays his clutch around, stuff like that. These are things that, that could be known from FaZe. FaZe themselves haven't played a head-to-head -head with MIBR yet. Don't know if there's any practice there. Wouldn't be surprised if there was. But now it's just MIBR trying to get the final two rounds after losing a series of clutches and very confidently played rounds by FaZe. Yeah, this is a side that could have delivered earlier on, but FaZe Clan looking to just be more and more stable as things unfold. Cold nearly lining up too. Luckily, TRK will take down his front kill for him. Brokey eats a nade. And Kierby looking to come in from Mini, but a deep position cleared out. KNG just dropped. But obviously Olaf on 100 HP, his teammates not so lucky. Utility for the post plant, a single smoke on TRK. Flashbangs in abundance for FaZe. They throw one out from heaven. Kierby's gonna be that front runner trying to peel a player off of the site, but nobody's facing at all. MIBR doing a good job of just getting back into all the nooks and crannies, and because of it, they will take a third round at least. Well, finally a successful post plant situation for MIBR. 
They pull it off with a fast upper split. We see how many of their rounds go towards upper. They lost two 1v2s to Cold Zera and never showed their face downstairs again. Coming back into upper, they've still not had success, but this is just the site that they like to hit the most. And it's finally this quick upper split it, that makes the difference. They pull it off, they get the trades, they find Sanctuary inside the site with no one pushed in anymore. They get the bomb down, they play the post plant perfectly. Last round of the half, they're looking for just four rounds, okay? Overall, they could have had a better half, but if they get four, you know, maybe there's enough dignity in that score line to talk about uh, potential for a comeback in the second. But so far, so great for FaZe Clan. They're hitting shots right now. They've got FaZe on a wobbly economy as well. So let's see if uh, they can flex that extra leg. Ooh, a lineup that almost gives Kierby two. Rain, though, always composed in these sorts of positions, but his teammates are getting erased in the meantime. He decides to go for the peak. TRK keeps him honest. Olaf, what can you deliver? Molotov comes flying towards him. He gets a quick headshot a second. Oh, so close! In my BR, they're becoming a real team to be taken seriously, but there's so many interesting storylines going on in Counter-Strike, and two of them are right before us. On the other side of the server, FaZe also have an interesting status as a team that lost their star, but are still looking very strong. And they're showing that with this 11-4 to score line. It's a quick explode into the ramp early on in this pistol, Cold Zera. Calling what looks to be a really good strat. They actually are holding back and lobby to get the refrags as well. Brokey will pick up everything. And advantage for the T's. Yeah, come on. Really nice split. Oh my hit. god, what a beautiful split by FaZe Clan. VSM. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait. He was on a 3 4 resolution. Yeah. Couldn't see that guy below him. Okay. That was such a good split by FaZe, man. They even had the extra piece going outside. I love that call from Cold Zera. Burst explode into mm. ramp, but they cover the lobby push in as they know that MIBR are going to try to get some info back. <laughs> BSM, he's just like hiding in the blood stains inside of the vent. Yeah, when Kirby came in from the mini, I just knew it was all over. That was sick. Yeah, timed so nicely, all of the routes. Like a synchronized boy band, FaZe Clan. 12 to 4. I always try, I'd lump in Nico and Coldzera in the same way because they're both such star players you think, oh, they're not capable of being like really, really good callers. <laughs> but we, they are different people, right? And we don't know how, how much an affinity Coldzera may or may not have for calling. We know that he's called in the past. You know, on SK, like famously at a major in an overtime, like high, highest pressure ever was like his first major. So we know he can do it. We don't know how much he wants to, but seeing rounds like that, we're like, okay, he's, you know, he's basically, he does have some kind of system and there are shining moments here and there. Kanji scout kill, or rather damage, gets followed up by Lucas. So that's Kierby done. Man advantage for MIBR, minute on the clock. They have waning utilities. Two smokes, two frags between VSM and TRK. Looks like ramp room may be in question. And that's going to be a good way to still avoid the scout. Ooh, scout shot hits another, but now it's gone down. And because of that scout kill, or rather kill versus the scout, they're going to look to maximize the pressure down here on this B site. They find a player in the open. VSM dead to rights, a smoke at a perfect moment because there are three players from MIBR all on the other side of this. Olaf just stands in the middle, MAC-10 in hand, ready for the push. Follow-up smoke to enable the bomb plant. All too easy, a little softening damage off of the frag grenade. If I'm MIBR here, I go and grab that scout and just try to keep what's left for the next follow-up round. I like what we're seeing so far from FaZe Clan. They're keeping their options open on the T side. They're working different parts of the map simultaneously. I think Colt mentioned something about how he really wanted his team to be able to stay alive in defaults. Like that was a prerogative that they wanted to focus on. But I found, I was actually watching like an overpass game by them on T side and I was like, just today. And I was thinking their default is lacking something where they're not taking enough risks to actually find kills. And they're focusing too much on like very default map control and like better teams were able to take advantage of them. But right now it feels like they are pressing up a little bit more, trusting in their skills, using tactics to find openings, while also doing this kind of cool, you know, multi-pronged attack across the map. 
Could be the waning moments of this game here for MIBR. They've only got pistols besides the Galil and saved utility for TRK. If you've watched any amount of Counter-Strike, you know that Nuke hits this, this turning point. Either the CTs start winning with many rounds in a row, or we do get that blowout result because of FaZe's awesome CT side. We are almost on the cusp of it, but obviously this round, the last freebie for FaZe, or at least it should be. There is that Galil in the question, and KNG is in a nifty spot here just at the base of Silo. Hoping players just kind of cross by without clearing all their corners. And maybe Lucas rattles off a couple of shots, serves as a, as a distraction. Ah, but they go hard clearing. Okay. You can't get the wool over Rain's eyes. Hell smokes outside. No one in heaven to spot them. Perfect time to go lower. These L smokes, it's whatever cross smokes you throw, they can always be a fake. Every CT team knows that. Um,. Sometimes you walk close and just go lower normally like this. And if there's no CT up in heaven, it's a great time to do it. Especially around like this where there's not much investment can work off even more beautifully. The double setup on the decon stairs, control stairs. And Leo's got some opportunities, but Kirby is happy to aim Matt back. Yep, hits his headshot eventually. That one was a little bit labored, and VSM did take one with him. So you can see by the damage here that there was a chance. And Brokey also... Gonna basically seal the deal, but Lucas wants a fight. Now the bomb's already planted. All three players incredibly low, so if he just goes god mode and hits some heavy headshots, then yeah, he could still win this. He's got the kit. That five second difference could be huge, but he's not supposed to even have a chance here. No crossfire actually being played for the moment. They're just anticipating him walking into the windowsill like this. We got a player at the base of the stairs. It's the cold-blooded rain to get that 10-round lead for phase. MIBR, the culmination of this beating, comes into the next round where they will finally have guns to try and hold and try to piece together an astronomical comeback. Apart from the clutch moves at the beginning of the game, at this point now, FaZe look like by far and away the best team. And it's getting really scary here for MIBR. This is a map that we've seen much better performances on them from. And I don't know if they've got enough left here to be able to pull off such a big comeback. Again, we're looking at a situation where if you don't win, you go home. And it would be another kind of upsetting defeat here for MIBR where they've come close. So they're so close at the showdown to taking down even Astralis in their yeah. first game, I believe. I keep saying showdown, sorry, the fall series. Um, and now here at the showdown, this is where they end up because of that loss. And 1-2, one, G2, I think, as well, 2-1. The two-op adjustment. It's something, it's just a fail-safe maneuver. It eases up on the rotations. Two, you have a gimmick round where the first round, they're not going to expect both ops, so they both have a chance to get a kill very easily. It's a nice way to just at least leverage your position a little bit better. Get some confidence back and try to win a round. Brokey, Maul, nice. absolutely destroyed trying to come down the vents. Leo will also get a Molly kill with the help of TRK spam. And that is the bomb drop behind enemy lines. Coldzera, Ooh, well, he'll, he'll receive it, but I think now he's trying to get down the vent, and he will. A little bit of a wiggle room to play Ooh. off of, but Rain, he just came in from mini, takes the player off of Hut. TRK now kind of peeled in two directions, not sure if the vent player comes back up. Listen. This is, I mean, it is a 4v3, but because they have the two ops, right? One kill can make it, well, okay, well, it's the ops to actually do it. Rain gets hunted down outside. They know Cold Zera drop vent. Things become a whole lot trickier. Risky move for KNG, right? I mean, he's down here knowing that there's an additional player somewhere with him. But he still makes his move outside. They needed information. They needed a play to make, and they thought that moment of silence created by FaZe was a good chance to claw one back. Dead on. Easy shot. Sidelines rain. Can Kierby come in from heaven at the 40-second mark and somehow maybe cause a rotation, cause a problem that primes Cold Zera to come in with a clutch? Because Cold's laying down utility downstairs. He also has a bomb, though. Yeah, look, he's going to come back up vent into the uh, A site. Okay. Yeah. Using the utility down on B to draw A and draw rotates. It's worked. They were a little handful down there. Now, Kierby looking for an additional kill on the A site. Doesn't need the kill if he smokes the player off, and I love it. 
It looked like Cold was going to wrap around Hut. Now Cold could technically go back down to B, but they're stranded on the A site instead. And a man comes in from heaven, stops the plant, and nades in from Lucas to secure the round. Oh, Dude, very tense mid-round moment. Even with such little health, MIBR respecting their opponents. Definitely. They do their best to bring that back. A nice play by Kirby out of heaven. Distraction and lower to manufacture that away into the frown with the first kill. But uh, even with the smoke and hut and everybody else out, there's too many members of MIBR left over to be able to come back and refrag. But a nice attempt on the mid-round from FaZe once again. And it looks like double up pays off for what it's worth. KNG finding his kill from inside secret. And now I think they're now just down to that singular op. And it'll be on KNG back of garage. Try to carefully pick apart some deagles if possible. Okay, good night. That's about wow. as long distance as it gets. Here, have a smoke. Smoke and a pancake. Wow. Well, that's an insane kill from Kirby. Oh, bit of a dud, but hey, he's still in position to maybe take a player with him. Rain has helped out, and oh, it's labored, but Leo still unable to pick up these kills. He's just like, I'm gone. Runs all the way back as far as he can. <laughs> Literally down to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Sprints away and calls for Big Brother. Interesting. He's, uh... That respect you're talking about. Here yeah. it is. Yeah, he left to go find his confidence. Okay. Cold Zero is a little too scoped in. Oh my god, he can't kill him. Okay. Meant Finally. to get blindsided and eventually finds it. Kierby, quarter of his health in the 1v3 with 30 seconds. This is looking like MIBR going to put another round on the board and keep this comeback rolling. But it's in its infancy. Let's be real here. MIBR. They've got a lot of work to do before we can take the comeback seriously. But we can take these players seriously as we want, man. Kierby, that is some sick aim. Yeah. Look at that splatter, That's man. Disgusting. Yeah, from that distance. Like a pumpkin. I had to pray to the D-Gods to be accurate from that distance, even. Three Augs in play here for MIBR. Great map for Augs, honestly, with all the long lines that they could use. I mean, it's good at any range, to be honest, but especially helps magnify the targets outside. Whoa. Dude, I love it. Rain just inching closer to the fire. Two quick kills come in from MIBR. Leo feeling the heat here gets dinged through the edge of the doorway. It's a two-man advantage. But FaZe Clan, well, they're still on 100 HP each. And KNG and Leo both on a shaky situation. Obviously, bomb kind of thrown out in the open. It's retrievable. Yeah, I think there's actually like a world where he tries to grab this because if they have it out in the open, maybe they don't rotate lower here and yeah. if Coldzera could sneak the bomb, this would be an easy vent dive. I don't know how aware they are that there could be a threat down there, but Ooh, he'll pick it. Big. He doesn't grab it, actually. And he still knows there's one more backside, I'm pretty sure, but the big flank point. is already here, yeah. Crucial. Lucas hits it on its head, and Olaf can't trade it right away, but does give chase. I mean, this is now... Two of the players left incredibly low, and Leo on half health. He peeks out, and Olaf. He almost closed the first half with an impeccable clutch, but can he do as much here and now? 35 seconds. He knows one player had to run away, and he's got this other man stranded. He should be calling for help. Olaf adjusts the aim, but Leo, consistent in his aggression, peeking and prying wide to get that seventh on the board. All of this effort from MIBR, all of these struggles in mid-round moments, and they're still only now at half of the round count of phase. Yeah, you can tell they're a little bit nervous here. I mean, you can't blame them. I'm just pointing it out, but it feels like Olaf, he comes so close to actually winning this. Three attempts at this duel from Leo. Ooh, Leo actually, I thought Leo would be predicting the yeah, position. Yeah, I thought he was holding for exactly for nice where Olaf play. was, so there was a chance, but he had a great shot. Okay. All right, pistols up. What's well, good, MIBR? Not going down without a fight. And that's what you said when this map started. That you they do not go down without a fight. Some the energy, the up. fire, it's there. Yeah. I feel like, you know, Fnatic in the online era, if you watch them in a situation like this, they might just like, it feels like they just call it quits, honestly, <laughs> by their looks. But MIBR, it's so fresh for them to prove something with this roster. And it feels like they are not going to quit. They almost got through within the main series itself. 
when nobody had high expectations for them. So we thought that with a few weeks off to practice and continue to improve, remember how fresh this roster actually is. That first half, perhaps an anomaly. At least that's what they have to tell themselves here as they claw rounds back one by one. KNG prepared for a peek. Oh, the Brokey! Oh Just like God. Kierby hits a deagle from downtown. And now things are in question. CTs drop a smoke on Squeaky, but Heaven's compromised already. And an AWP for the young Dane. Yeah, that's very true. It's not every day you see Kirby on the AWP, but no better time for him to use it. However, 15 seconds left, and they've got to make a move. There is an important trade here in TRK. They're trying to punish the ladder. Time ticks down past the 10 second mark. Trades come out for the T side. They'll be able to stick the plant if they get the kill in heaven. And oh my god, VSM with that micro adjustment spray transfer from the AUG from the heavens into the floor. That's just sick. That one tap. Or not even a tap, but the one bullet needed, rather. Zoom. How, KNG, this guy is just getting absolutely owned by these deagles and these pixel peaks from so far away. PSM, bro, just clowning on the ladder. Look at that. Boop. I mean, Brokey was coming off the plant, didn't have time regardless. Yeah. But uh, didn't even give him the chance, damn it. So, now six rounds the difference. The margin of error near non existent. But Made in Brazil have known that since they got the CT rounds rolling. They lost the second pistol, only evaporating. He'll pick up the cursed op again. KNG, will he play outside in a similar way? It will at least phase aren't on Deagle, so there's probably not a chance for them to take a similar duel. Funnily enough, even with AKs, you're not just going to swing out on an opper that way. More to lose. And so less risks can be taken. It could be a pivotal kill here. Could have gone the way of Lucas. Ends up going towards Rain. A little bit of HP left over. But they killed the one player who's trying to suss out control outside and can now start to take it over a little bit here. They're very aware of the operas. You can see the smoke on the top of Mini just to make sure that no one from the back of Big Garage can spot them jumping down crossing. Bullock dropping a smoke inside of me, but with players outside, it's not clear exactly what they're trying to accomplish in KNG. Oh Ooh. man, as soon as he doesn't get deagled, he'll be able to be explosive. Completely locks down the cross. That pushes two of FaZe's players ever closer to the ramp, which is technically open for the taking. And then you have to ask yourself, how does Kierby slot into this play? He still possesses Bomb outside, thinking maybe he can come in through Mini. Oh, and he's going to find a little bit of timing. They go down the vent, but he's caught by TRK. Crucial position. That does throw a player up the ladder, but KNG gets that scope deep through Squeaky, and it's good from MIBR. They are on fire, and they are clawing this game back. They have gotten five rounds in a row and five more to go to tie this at 14. Yeah, now they're starting to get a bit more comfortable. They can start to taste it a bit. They're feeling the game here. It's starting to become real. And Still, importantly, yeah. not overdoing it. Definitely. Nobody's cheering, nobody's shouting, nobody's yeah. screaming from One MIBR. And we know they will once they get to that tied score. But it needs to be tempered expectations round after round. Lucas getting outside. He died to rain last round. But this is supposed to be a freebie here versus just the pistols. Rain will lead the charge. Forward facing into the Alpha KNG. Great tracking here for the second shot. Oh man, it is sure heating is up, Mo. Now anchor. we're talking. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so are they. But then he immediately gets it back under control. That's double digits for Made in Brazil. Six rounds in a row. They haven't even had to win a round by way of bomb diffuse. They've always had a minimum of two players left in half of the rounds of the six they've won. Two players was the minimum. I was really impressed early on with the T-side calling of FaZe Clan, but now they're starting to fall apart. Really need to get the opera flashed off if they're trying to cr cross outside or, you know, have better protocols to avoid that. I think we just saw yep. someone dropping into 
secret. And Rain tries to pull his knife out to get down onto Mini, but Coldzera again opt outside. And this is a second frag here for KNG <laughs> right into the hands for 100 HP. It's a four on three situation. Kirby answers back, but KNG, he's not done. He's looking for the re -peak, and it's actually Lucas to pick up the last three kills. MIBR are now at 11 rounds to the 14 of phase. This lead has diminished. It doesn't even matter to MIBR. We're almost at the point that even at a deficit, they're probably feeling more confident in winning this game than FaZe Clan. You'd think so, man. Especially with FaZe being in another awkward spot where they have to come in with a half buy. Every individual starting to find that form. And you can see the energy building. And that's what MIBR do, bro. They ride the highs. It's not close situations either. I mean, and they're avoid getting the loaded. MIBR can't even get a cross out. Okay, so now we're going to have some nades to try to stop them. Spam goes through the smoke. Everybody gets into lower. It's a lot of pistols here. Yep. MIBR just need to split up evenly, really. Even if they don't have a proper read, knowing that uh, FaZe Clan are low. <laughs> VSM hears this. Low on guns. It's not kills, but rather map control that FaZe Clan have found at the start of this one. KNG with an op kill to start as it has been. He is not missing shots. And even oh, up monster close, mode. he nails it. Cold Zera's dead, but here comes that ramp flank. It's Olaf 1v4, and the Deagle's doing damage. He's honing in on the follow-up frag, but now they're all clumped up on the other side. And that's where it ends. Two rounds the difference. We are talking eight in a row. The only victories for FaZe on this T side were the pistol and consequent follow-ups. That three round spree silenced by the eight of MIBR. What we're getting now is major finalist KNG. He's making it look so simple. I mean, I'm sure for FaZe, they're thinking they're countering him at every turn, but for him, he's seeing through the interference at the moment. He can find these picks. He's opting with a lot of clarity, a lot of confidence, a lot of speed. But a higher hurdle than the last round. FaZe back in with guns. Nobody to try and counter op KNG. They cannot and have not been able to cool him off. That's a scary prospect. True test of the IGL in these final moments. It's not that Cold Zero lacks the clutchness. It's just the game plan. Does he have it? Does he have the answers? We're going to get the L smokes outside again. A slight variation. They're, we don't know if they're going to try to push through. Potentially just a walk to lower. Seems like that's the case. They're not going to risk it crossing outside. Kanji's going to make sure they don't come through the smokes, and then that's it. Ramp guy can, can drop. He can refresh their position. Uh, but the commitment, yeah, it looks like they're going to commit to lower because Olaf is in squeaky. He's meant to just stop them from rotating down vent. Oh, he's going to start contesting it himself. Two players from the CTs look to wreck him with his nades out, but Olaf cuts down the first kill, eats a flashbang. Now he's starting to panic ever so slightly. His three teammates starting to now pick up the speed. Doors swung open, instantly met by the op of KNG. He is everywhere and anywhere they need. 18 seconds left in this play. Brokey's going to start testing this A site, but TRK back behind Vent. Here's the footsteps, gets the trade frag again. It is KNG. No, it's VSM rather. The AUG makes the difference. Cold with another 2K. Five, four, four seconds. Three, no time. No time. No time to plant. That's it's it. just TRK to survive no and MIBR within one. Oh my God, they had the perfect setup. They could have gotten into lower, planted the bomb. They had everything going for them. KNG instantly claps them from ramp on the cross, locks it down with this line of sight. And the kills are starting to come out here for FaZe, even when that doesn't work out well, but they cannot deal with them. Where is the Molotov, the smoke to ramp to stop him from being able to peek this? There's just so many open lines for our men here. And this is a position where they got down secret without any resistance. No eyes in control room. No one there. Sliding in alongside KNG. Those two sets of eyes from ramp side. I thought KNG was left all on his own, but his teammate very quickly in position. What an insane second half from KNG. Absolutely nuts. Not over yet. FaZe just need to break through to at least secure 15. Because they could still be staring a loss in regulation 
in the face if they're not careful. Lucas is going to play close to the box, and I don't know if FaZe anticipate this kind of an aggression. They haven't had to deal with these types of moves. BSM able to manage two kills off the AUG. He's dropped the bomb, nearly able to get a third, but then three frags back the way of FaZe. This puts Leo and TRK in the hot seat. They're immediately coming back to clean out the lobby. This is the best position FaZe have been in now, even better than the last round. There is no information for MIBR. Interestingly, they're actually flanking the lobby. Whoa. This is cra Look at Cold Zera holding back on this. No way the CTs are going to spot him, right? He'll get the first kill. Second one should be a lock. Headshot in. Flanking someone like Cold Zera is not easy. That's a bomb plant down at the B site. Olaf wasting no time to get into position. TRK, does he contemplate the save? Yeah. They, he's You'd just think thinking so, it might be upper, potentially catch a free rotator. I don't know if he's going for this. Maybe the way he sees this is they can put together a buy next round. I'm not sure. He's definitely sussing this out. But with the ramp setup, I don't think there's any hope for our man, TRK. Opens the door, gives himself away, goes for the peak, goes for the spray, and Brokey locks it down. FaZe will find their 15th, but my god, did MIBR make them work for it. Yeah. Nine round spree. This is even with MIBR from BSM on the ramp. He has to hit every shot, basically, but it's all about cold, right? He's so smart to wait for Lucas. He's even smarter to sit in this position. Who even... Who does that? Yeah, where where did you learn how to stand there? Like in this in this position, it's like the perfect read. Who's who who comes to take over outside to reclear to flank lobby at that time in the round? Like only Cold Zero would know that. It was literally on the Brazilian hot dog wavelength to be able to figure that out. <laughs> that was so sick. They're all waving in the wind together. All right. You know the sketchy situation is that 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 just wild run of rounds. There are limitations to the buy here for Made in Brazil. They've got no utility on KNG. Leo's on the MP9. KNG frag pack. Enjoy this. Yeah, you can the consistency in his shots, man. Tracking players in the midair like this, if we get the ones down at that B site from ramp, you're going to see a similar one where everybody's just trying to jump by him and he continues to deliver. But right out the gates here, FaZe not wanting to give MIBR another chance not wanting them to push this the distance. Little bit of damage here. Output from VSM. He calls his teammate into position. Yeah. That's KNG by his side. They make the confident rotate and oh. KNG capitalizes. VSM still here for the fallback. He has the promise, but they do not clear him and he turns it into two. Now, double man advantage, but Olaf, quick trade. He's going to run out. Into the ramp room, Cold trying to catch a kill here towards outdoors, and he very well could. Lucas is tucked into the side of Secret. Is Cold going to get caught the same way he did Lucas? Absolutely. Olaf, he has been in more than one clutch position, and he has the bomb on his back. 81 HP. They're letting this go the distance. We are probably looking at 30 rounds now, and FaZe Clan, no confidence in what they can do on the T side. No subsequent rounds. Puts the Molotov onto heaven. Nobody there to actually contest this, but better safe than sorry. Flash to follow suit. Now he could challenge the player over on mini first and foremost. There's going to be a little moment in time here as the CTs try to scramble back up into position, and this actually bodes very well for Olaf. But the door is closed. And that changes everything, because now he's met by a Molotov as he tries to get back into the spot, but he claws Lucas off of the clutch. Now two more players to go, and he gets killed from TRK. MIBR pushing it to a 30th round. All right, a great try. I actually did it. Sorry, I didn't realize he had the bomb in that position, so I thought that was over, but he definitely brought it really close. Wow, down to the final moments. He had to be peeking after that second kill with the, for the refrag to come in. But yes, we are going to round 30 now. My apologies for that mistake. And we're, I don't know, this is another position where KNG is at the perfect moment. Like, he, a perfect spot at the perfect moment. And Lucas gets one over right. Cold Zera. It's revenge in I the most it. important way possible, right? Like, they both were so patient last time around, but this time he read it. You see Cold Zera's face too. It just says like, why is he standing there? As if he didn't do the exact same thing just one round ago. So I, I like it. Two sides of the coin. 
Round 30. After that first half, I don't know how many people expected us to get this far. That was the first retake needed from MIBR CT side. Nine rounds in a row by way of elimination. Eight, excuse me. Clock got the last one. Question is, will they try something brand new? They've got this really crowded up attack where they're not pushing out anything, not using a lot of grenades early, sitting back and waiting. Is this the remedy to their problems? Get that L smoke. Molly into secret. They could try and play around this. Mini is susceptible, but there's players stacked up on that A site. We've even got a man in KNG over here towards Hell. He's busting out the windows. Oh, Lucas starting to get a little curious here. Molotov right onto the feet of TRK. Tons of damage versus FaZe. They are barely standing. KNG, Leo, and Lucas taking it down to just Brokey. It's with a flurry of frags that MIBR force the issue. Overtime secured. And you can see what that means because they do not want to let Nuke slip through the fingertips. They know what they can win here. They've got to dig deep, but they have to stay calm, Launders, because it's no longer round by round. It's OT started. This is no joke, man. What are we talking about in terms of round one? After we had that initial, we had the initial pistol round one, the conversions, one round so late in there. Yep, only the one. Three in a row to start it. Holy, this is, I mean, like, you can see from the cams, right? Who's going to be more excited to be in OT right now? It's MIBR. They get to start out on CT side as well. All right. They have a lot of problems, and, and it, we haven't seen any solutions. Hmm. Just like that. Every round means all the more. KNG's KD grows. The gap grows even wider. And again, it's really, he's died a lot, but that's, this second half, he has had such a glow up. Let's see who's ready to dig deeper. I have a hunch. Both those AWPs, where have they gotten off to? We've got KNG in secret, VSM on ramp. Smokes may block off all the other vision, but this doesn't nullify KNG. The Molotov will. He's gonna have to hold off a little bit. Kierby actually takes his head off. <gasps> Oh, he gets vision over top of the staircase. That's who you need. That's the key right there. KNG is dead. Massive. You cannot let this slip. They're really pissed off that they couldn't pull this off in regulation, but you have to assume this is where things get really hairy for MIBR now, coming right into OT with this kill. The answer back on Olaf Meister. That's big, four to four. Players lower, they're getting scared now. They're starting to run. See from the minimap, they're all downstairs. Perfectly timed. VSM, oh. that is slick. Now it's a slight edge for MIBR. 20 seconds makes this a tough spot oh, for late, FaZe. Molly, he'll have to peek. Yeah, and it's not going to be easy to blind VSM at all, so you better hope he misses this shot. If Kierby even needs to extend, no, it's all a distraction. The bomb crosses from elsewhere, and now the retake's on. Rain trying to keep his head low trying not to show himself as he looks to rack up a frag of his own. Commitment to the spray down, and Kierby in with Vents takes us to the 2v2. Coldzera over on the double stairs, teammates by his side, and we've got the CTs already starting to cross along the rafters, but they've dropped down most on sight. Cold hits the shot, another tap from Leo, and the grenades start sailing forward, time ticking quickly, and they are playing with him, teasing him as he wants this 16th round, but Faith will find it first. Kirby brings the clutch. That opening frag is what means the world to face. Finally, the break the curse here on T side. It's still not subsequent rounds, but the first in OT could be enough for them after we go out of this first half in OT to be able to bring it back. They just need to have a clean CT side at this point, and it's definitely very scary. MIBR, they're required to win these last two, basically. It's actually nuts, like... The amount of times even that KNG got one digged, and then after that just continued to play as if, like, unfazed completely, and continue to have so much impact. So we're off to the races again.
Second round of OT, KNG up in the cross. We really do want to, you know, keep paying close attention to him because it feels like he is both starting the round and taking control of it, basically at every single turn. Don't forget, he was the first casualty of that last round. Kierby getting the better of him in secret stairs. He's given himself a slight reposition, hoping instead that a terrorist comes over the top of Silo will not be the case. Counter-terrorists postured well enough on this A site. I mean, look, they're everywhere. Ramp is literally gambled. No one is spotting. I mean, no one's not ever. even watching it. Okay, the smoke's come out on the cross now. And someone will drop vents as an adjustment. KNG will make sure no lurk play is happening. But they're still overstaffed upstairs if this is where FaZe Clan wants to go. 40-second mark. Oh, and they do want to go. Yeah, they do, but will they get to? Okay, actually, they're turning over the ramp. Yeah, this this might change things up a little bit. Take a glimpse at the lower side. It's not got anybody here. No, it's they're just dark on door. Down, yeah. Leo's gonna swing the door. And Olaf instantly takes his head off. Dude, this B play comes out of nowhere. And I mean, MIBR, we knew they weren't prepared for it. They send one player down to try and get into position, but now it's going to be a desperate retake because they can't forfeit a second round in overtime. Olaf, inside of control, dies. And that could be what they need. The jackknife into this bomb site. Everybody else is dying around them, but Brokey at least delivers one. Kierby's done. And MIBR, with no hooks in that B site, just Bust through the wall. All standing out in the open in the middle of the site because, as you mentioned, didn't have a key position to play the post plant from. Inevitably losing. Could have had a heroic spray down inside a decon. Could have traded out control room players without dying, but didn't. On every single turn, they got outgunned. How did MIBR look that comfortable after losing ramp as a gamble? Didn't have a single person in it. The call is perfect from FaZe Clan. I didn't even look like they were going to go for ramp in that position. And once they did, we thought it was over. Zero to a hundred in the blink of an eye towards that B site. And you can see them, how frantically they're clearing every position in ramp room because they're assuming there still had to be something to hold them back. Fair but it wouldn't be until the post plant that they ran into problems. Fair to say that phase look better now, but they're still, it doesn't really matter how much improvement they show. You don't get points for showing the math here in overtime. It's only about the wins. There's just not enough rounds for contextualizing losses to matter at all. It's just ones and zeros. And FaZe Clan looking for one last. Triple smokes down yet again. Molotov meant to section the players off. Does cost Rain a quarter of his health. Can they know the threat looms near? On the opposite side of all of that smoke are multiple members of MIBR. They give away the secret stairs. That much is free for the taking. The T's place the bomb within it, and by moving that CT oh, off of the oh. ramp, they open this up massively. KNG just with the deagle. Oh, he finds the best of the timing. Drops the bomb, swaps to the op, goes in for another Yo. B. Are you kidding? And now that that bomb's been thrown back down, it's on rain to try and recover. Brokey's elsewhere also collecting kills, but is Brokey alone? 15 seconds to go, and desperation sinks in. He has nothing to lose. He extinguishes fire, but he can't put out the flames of MIBR. 17 rounds the edge as they swap to the offense. The way he played that, it looked like he just had a deagle on an eco round. He confidently comes up behind Cold Zera on the nick of a timing so close. Cold Zera was aware of the potential for a flake. And then look at this, the power play from the top ropes into Kirby, who's waiting for him to come down. A beautiful read from KNG. God damn. They run it all the way back from an 11-4 half. But don't forget that. They only had four rounds in regulation on the offense. But what they didn't have back then was the fire. The fury that has fed them 
this comeback. You could see it building round after round. It was a controlled environment. Kogu behind the team, telling them to cool off, telling them to keep calm. It was gonna be a long job. And they've nearly finished it. But we can't get ahead of ourselves. Phase to the CT side where they looked near impenetrable. Kierby's gonna lay down some utility. He's playing around the vent. A slip past Little Blue. This could screw Brokey oh, over, running. and he doesn't even know it. Yep, KNG, or sorry, excuse me. VSM smells this. Oh, he'll do a little bit of damage. Push Brokey back. Brokey was looking for eyes outside and won't find an opportunity to get a kill. Looking potentially through the, the floor here instead, just making sure they can't come up the ladder behind him. There is a split coming towards the ramp. Olaf. This is a fight the T's want to take, and they'll get it and win. That's their opening. Oh my Suddenly God. that B site's entirely in question. Look at this ramp is so open at the moment. Coldzera trying to drop his roll. That's nuts. Because <gasps> they don't That's know about Cold. Ball. That lets him come in with another kill. If Brokey makes Cold, oh, oh and oh. another one. The op in from Squeaky Door. Bomb dropped. It looked like MIBR were going to sink their teeth down into the ramp, even possibly the lobby. But FaZe just lock this down. Brokey and Cold Zera side by side. Leave TRK left. And in a one versus three, he will take back a kill. But there's another one right in front, and that is where he falls. FaZe tie again Damn, at 17 apiece. The dynamic duo of Brokey and Cold. Beautiful. As Brokey came onto this team, Cold Zero was always playing right side, right beside him, basically on every side, probably mentoring him every step of the way. Undoubtedly. And it's great to see them working in tandem to pull off a hold like that when they needed it. This was a round MIBR had. They could have converged on ramp. If that bomb was not on KNG's back inside of the ramp, they wouldn't have had to come back into lobby to even trade him out. They could have got the hell out of there. Scary for MIBR. They avoid dying to rain in front of Squeaky. That's a big win condition, honestly. They get that outside control they were always looking for. But after that, they still falter. A shoulder spot costs KNG a minute amount of health. VSM tucks back behind Mini. There's bullets flying through all the walls, and oh, maybe this one's a little too hot. They'll forfeit lobby for now. Another attempt at outside. Anyone's game at this point. First to 19. Wins the map. Oh, missed smoke. Yikes. Not the time to make an error. Especially seeing as it's a fake. They're going to go ahead and try and test this ramp. Who's in position? It's Olaf. Brokey's looking to lend a helping hand off. Missing that shot. And KNG catching rain. It's a man advantage for MIBR, but 35 seconds remain. He was just able to catch another here inside of Mini, but it's two kills back, three kills back from FaZe. A shutdown on the CT side. FaZe continue to deliver. Lucas, the next casualty. And all that's left is TRK again. But he has been falling in these moments. And once more, he is the final kill for FaZe. They secure double OT at least, but made in Brazil. Made under pressure. Ran it all the way back in regulation. And for that reason alone, you are not allowed to write them off. <laughs> You're not allowed at all. You got to give them credit. Don't do it. Until the end of the game. Just like I'm sure FaZe did. They looked worried right from like super aggressive to open things up. Last round we saw the only real piece of success was KNG to use his off, But he doesn't have that now. Deagle in hand. Phase have earned a save out of MIBR. Doesn't mean they can't win. They've actually won a low buy just like this in regulation. Quick execute, maybe? Yeah, they're gonna try and commit through the smoke. Only one. Considering the success Reigns had in that position, it's not half bad. VSM a second and kill. lower. Bomb is lower. Oh, Olaf. Sent downstairs to try and plug this hole, but Brokey, he's making a lot of noise. They're and waiting, because of though. that, they are right behind him. He knows it. Yeah, they... Everyone kind of knows what's Ooh. going on. Right in the head. He took damage. Dropped to 42. 
Basically similar to VSM, Cold Zero, this is a cold-blooded position, but he gets called out. VSM is doing everything, and TRK finally able to find a bit of success on a late lurk. It is Olaf in the counter clutch. MIBR seem to succeed when they have no room for error. Double overtime from MIBR. Absolutely clutching it is VSM Launders. He swings open those doors, punishes Rain, who is such a lock. Oh, still very awake. Two ops here for Olaf and Brokey. On the CT side, we start, start things out in double OT. And again, MIBR, even after losing the two rounds in a row. Oh my god, low guns. Come they on, man. They still win. Two deagles that round, and they won. Oh, frag grenades. Could have been way worse, all things considered. They weren't ready for that to come sailing in. But they just weren't really on the money. A minute 20. A lot of these rounds have these kinds of moments where things just fall silent. This is an awkward situation. They're inside of Squeehy, but there's no room here for KNG to look for an opening kill. There's still nades available. A flash comes out in their face. Squeaky has been a trouble point for them. Rain has stopped them so many times, Whoa. but the continuation flashes are perfect. They get so much progress downstairs. It might not even be clear that they've made it this far. Olaf will find a kill, though, as the guardian from the ramp. Lucas is the one to go down. They'll try to cross now to the back of the site. Leo makes some progress, and KNG, he guards upstairs all the while. He's got a player locked in, but as he gets that kill, Cold Zera looms near. And that's an easy execution. So a man advantage for the retake from FaZe because they deal with KNG, but Olaf keeping himself on a swivel is gonna push Leo into the clutch. Now, Bomb is planted on the back of that site and he could so easily still be in decon. Looked like he wanted to leave, but he actually lays down an additional smoke. This is gonna cause confusion. Coldzera's gonna stick this with absolute ease. That's it. He plays it. He tries to see if they're going to give him a chance. A second stick, potentially, but no with three. They go the meat shield strat and stick the bomb, and that's all it takes. Leo can't win. It's a gamble. It's not a bad one, but it's the wrong one. That's a first great wow. shot there from Brokey. And again, the guardian of the ramp. It's Olaf Meister to stand Wait. there and grab two opping. Not only this, but turn around and kill TRK. Did Olaf miss the shot on the guy who swung wide and hit the other through the door? I don't know. I... If we get a chance, I'd like that replay again, please. If there comes a lull in the action, because honestly, there may be more kills to replace that one but it looked like he robbed the life from the man in the background. Brokey gonna open up shop Ooh. yet again. Back Brokey to back done. rounds. Brokey on an op is something glorious. And now KNG called back into the action. He wants revenge for VSM, but Brokey very quick to reposition. And he's actually relying on his teammate to hold off from Mini just in case he gets pushed. He knows this is a possibility, and KNG slowly falling into the exact booby trap that they want him to. Look at that, all too easy. A five versus three coming off of the back of it. FaZe Clan in the first overtime had two CT rounds before letting the third one slip. But now still a chance in this. They want that 20th as quick as they can, but Cold from behind vent delivers a kill, has teammates all around him. Lucas is able to answer with only one, and FaZe still gunning for that flawless CT side. Yeah, they're looking like they're going to grab it, putting up the performance we expected from them on CT side here in overtime in both halves. It looks a little bit sketchy, and here's where the door swings open. We're going to potentially get a peek. Shot comes out. He just, yeah, I guess he chooses. Yeah, he chooses. Let's the first one slide. Okay. But that's Olaf in a nutshell. Composed. Clinical. Always cool. And keeping it that way as FaZe attempt to take their 21st. 21 rounds to secure triple overtime. 22 for the win. They're going fast and taking hella damage oh. through the smoke, but it's actually the kill back Nate. of the SG and Rain. 
Oh my god, look at the health bars at the moment. Four on four situation, all one shot kills, and they're starting to get melted down. Olaf, bro, they're running into the back. Just the utility usage, but Brokey's actually gonna drop a shot that gives them a chance here. He has one health left. And his teammates getting damaged. Brokey taking one with him. It's back into the 2v2. A Molly on the double door. And VSM with a teammate back on the floor holds onto ramp. If that door swings wide, then it's on Lucas to hit the headshot, but he starts to look away. He better focus. And if they fall silent, then my question becomes, what do FaZe do here? They have everything covered, right? Decon and control room. It's really about the CTs to make a mistake or dealt themselves and leave. But if they, they have started to move now, and that could be an opening for MyBR to at least put the bomb down, but it's still not gonna feel comfortable. Oh, there is such a small gap in the timing. It looks like VSM gave up some information, oh. but it doesn't matter. He takes Rain out and Cold, he did doubt himself. He walked it back all the way up the ladder to upstairs. The bomb can now get planted in safety, but they haven't put it down yet. But Lucas, so exposed, he swings oh, and VSM with the whip back, slaps him to the dirt. It is another third round on the T side of overtime for MIBR. Goddamn. Holy. We are not playing around these close moments. I can't even remember who was ahead up until this very last moment. Dude, that's these trades instant. are absolutely ridiculous. It's as if Brokey self oh my God. trucks and VSM a truck that just smashes into the door there. Cold, he was silent to drop back down vent, thought he'd catch him by surprise. And the funny thing is he goes for Z VSM. That was but if he opens that door. In human reactions moment right wow. here. Wow. Brazilian Hiko. One Remember more. This flick. He's actually one. Oh, oh my God. One more. Damn, dude, that's wild. Oh! Dude. It's like a slap, it's a backhand, that's what it is. Shot like that. Rain gotta lace up his shoes for this third overtime, or this second half of the second overtime. Second half of the second overtime is correct. Brokey looks like he's getting older every day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're at that part in the double OT where things are going to start getting a little loose. Got to keep track of the round count. 21 for triple overtime. 22 for the win. Yeah. It's just not easy to win these rounds. There's so many incredible shots being hit both ways. It's got to be frustrating as much as it, as it is fun to be kind of the best you know, the best person you know at Counter-Strike in the world, like in your in your world. But then you come into a server with so much talent on both sides and it's just like you can look like a very average player with how insane the opposition can be. So 20 to 19, 22 to win. Phase with a small lead, but struggles on T side. Dude, look at the pace oh. being set. Lucas completely countering what's supposed to be the squeaky hit. Cold Zera within the smoke. Vision soon to be regained. A second player nearly slain. Cold Zera walks away with five HP left over. VSM, bro, this guy is a boulder. Yeah. He's been so dope at ramp, honestly. Yeah, it's finding all the right angles. Kirby cannot win. And the first T round from FaZe looks like it fizzled out. Yeah, slowly melted down. They knew what they wanted out of the gate, that squeaky hit. But it was absolutely crunched down on. Yeah, VSM, <laughs> they're just mushier than a bowl of oatmeal in the scope of VSM and Rain. Well, he'll throw the Hail Mary, clean one tap to finally find that trade for Dignity. But the round is still looking like it's out of question. 46 seconds left, he'll try to get downstairs. The CT will swing out wide and Lucas can take his time with it as Rain is jumping around. And now we're at a tie game situation, two to go. Hard to say who has the specific advantage based on what we've seen so far, this far into overtimes. But I feel like MIBR might be comfortable now. Dude, just the fact that they clawed it back from the 11-4 first half, that's what leads me to believe that they're still in the driver's seat. It's just about closing. And you know FaZe, after such a strong start, aren't going to go down without a fight. It's so hard to tell. I just love these moments. We're in double overtime, and all three possible outcomes still 
Look at this angle. That's for free, isn't it? Oh my god, ducking under it. That's so critical. Whoa. KNG gets another clue. Let's and he'll see. have to hit a flick to pull this off. There's they're so assuming many he fell back almost. He comes back in. MIBR now with a man advantage, looking to take a lead in double OT. KNG knows there's a man up high. That's a desperate sprint back into Ooh! cover. But just as he gets into a sanctuary, he decides to rip one off of it. Now 2v4, Kier beaten Brokey, the youngest players of phase, one of which now fallen. No way. Our MIBR, oh, hold on, let's see. This is two rounds in a row, barely any losses at all. A stellar CT showing in the second OT. Kierby, he's gonna walk right into KNG and he misses a shot with no damage done. Still highly unlikely. But you are talking about a major winner after all. Have to look at a, for a huge mistake at this moment from MIBR to get anything out of it. 30 seconds up, they have no real incentive to move. Wait, a smoke through Mini and a flash on Secret. He's trying to sell the possibility of a B rotate, but he knows he has just enough time to hit this A site. And you see these CTs, they're starting to scramble. He is playing it as cool as he can, and they call out his position with the nade. That's fantastic. Keeping all the possibilities hot in their minds, and just like that, made in Brazil, after being down 14 to four, run this back this to a triple OT secure. This fade back, such a clutch opper. You thought you could question KNG in this game, just realize you've now enjoyed 22 20 second frag packages from him alone. Absolutely delivering, but this is it. Either FaZe keep this game going into a third overtime, or the three round CT side in double OT from the Brazilians gives them their map pick win. There are no second chances here at the showdown. It is elimination on the line. Exceeding all expectations at the series, competing with some of the very best teams in the world, despite being one of the freshest rosters to show up here. And now they're gonna show us this level of Brazilian resilience. Ridiculous, but not quite over. Wall of smokes being thrown by FaZe Outdoors. A group up outside the squeaky door. Four players from phase in position. Fifth one's coming in. Lucas, he's going to slam that door shut, but Rain reopens it. Molly's taking to the bomb site. TRK from the rafters. He's given us two kills already, and he dives down looking for a third. How about a fourth? No need. KNG in from above, and MIBR will.